Welcome to Diadem Life Arise. Today we got our group discussion teaching. We're following Podcast 10. Podcast 10, Anger Go Away, is over 60 minutes of awesome amount of scriptures to deal with anger. We're going to do it in under 20 with our group discussion teaching. Now, sins can wreck our lives. Pick a sin, it can do it. Anger is one of those sins. We're going to dial into anger today. We're going to get a quick 20 minutes in and figure out, identify it, get some tactics to beat it up so you can go on and live that, that great life that God's called you to live. Now, I want you to know at the end of this teaching is some epically awesome challenges. They're not going to feel good, but if you do them, you're going to have so much spiritual growth. And I also want to let you know about an update. We are on Locals now. Feel free to reach out to us. We'd love to connect with you and know you and help you personally. We love making content to help people have a diadem life. But now you know where to find us. You can see us on YouTube and download us wherever you download your audio podcasts. All the major players got us. Let's jump into it now. The sin cycle. Let's read what that is in James 1, 14 through 15. Temptation comes from our own desires, which entice us and drag us away. These desires give birth to sinful actions, and when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. It's important to understand this sin cycle. It's as old as dirt. It was back there when Adam and Eve started all this. Now, it's going to be hanging around us until Jesus fixes this. It's important to know this sin cycle because when we know how to deal with it, you can change the sin, whatever the name is. You put something else in there. It's the same sin cycle. We start off here, we have evil desires in our heart, and then temptation comes to us, and eventually blame everybody else or the planet, whatever we do, we're dragged into sinful places, and then whoops, we commit the action. Now our sinful life's going to grow, and we got sinful consequences, and they'll multiply. This is dangerous, y'all. If God has his hand on sin, we want to get rid of it. Now, I'm going to show you a picture for our visual learners of a, of a door. It's kind of scary looking door. My dog scratched all the paint off it. But if you'll notice there, there's about a fist size hole in it. And I am not proud of that moment of my life. And I, as a craftsman, I could have fixed that right away. And I, I've got enough money to buy a door. But I remember when I hit it, I was embarrassed of my anger and I don't want that in my home. And I, I, I could have just fixed the door because I wanted to hurry up and hide it and just say I'll never do it again. And you know what? I, I, I changed, and I, I'm not doing that again, and I, I don't have a history of this, but I left it up. And I've looked at it for a year or two, and I just remind myself I don't want to be that person. Now, some of you are thinking this anger thing, it's not the biggest thing in the world. Well, I just hate these other nations. I, I hate these people who don't think like me. Hate is a problem. It's filthy and disgusting. I, I know sometimes we're proud. Like there are certain sins where we feel like, yeah, I do wrong, but I don't do that. Look, none of those games are going to work when you meet Jesus. Jesus is looking at your heart. We're going to talk about that. And, and look, some of you got some problems and it ain't about hitting doors. There's some other things going on. So we got to make sure we get this out of our heart because we don't want to have problems. Let's read another scripture here in Matthew 5, 21 through 22. You have heard that our ancestors were told, you must not murder. If you commit murder, you are subject to judgment. But I say, even if you are angry with someone, you are subject to judgment. If you call someone an idiot, you are in danger of being brought before the court. And if you curse someone, you're in the danger of the fire of hell. Now, these were red letters. These were spoken by Jesus. We got to understand, he said, don't murder. And when, when that law came to the, the people of God, they knew like, okay, I shouldn't take a rock and a club and kill people for no reason. So they, they did their best to not commit murder if they're following God's law. But you see, when Christ came, he, he really dialed it in. He said, actually, if you're just anger, angry with your brother or people that make you mad, you, you're going to have the same judgment of murder because it's in your heart. So we got to protect our heart. And even in the scripture, it's talking about if you call somebody an idiot, you could be in danger of, of the curses of hell. Look, guys, when Jesus is looking at our heart, we're not going to be able to tell him about how proud we are 
because of our political affiliation or, or how cool we were in the past. He wants awesome in us, and we don't want to wreck things, and we want to fix this because we don't want to be guilty of murder in our heart. Now check this scripture out. Proverbs 22, 24 through 25. Don't befriend angry people or associate with hot-tempered people, or you will learn to be like them and endanger your soul. Now, this is quite interesting. The spirit of wisdom wants to protect you. It doesn't want you to befriend angry people. It doesn't want you to become like them. It says it would endanger your soul. And any grown people here with uh, uh, spouses and children, if you go down, it could spread to your whole family. This is really important. And sometimes we're thinking, you know, but my friends are hurting and I'm hurting too. Why would I just leave my friends? I get the argument. But the spirit of wisdom knows what she's talking about. We got to really be careful. And, and could you imagine, you know, there's a lot of sins, right? And Jesus is going to help us every day. But if we're holding on to anger, could you imagine you're standing there in church, somebody needs help. And they, for some reason, they want to come talk to you. Could you imagine that sometimes the Holy Spirit is telling them, look, that person's angry. You need to stay away from them. You might endanger their soul. This is a big deal, y'all. Getting right with God, it's a heart issue. We can't let any sin slide. So we're going to read a, a selection of Scripture about the qualifications of an elder. And some of you may be wondering, hey, we're learning about anger. Why are we studying how to be the how to be like an elder. Well, if we're going to change in life, we got to have something that we're looking at. So by, by seeing the awesome qualities of this person, we're going to try to emulate that and become that. And when you latch onto something that maybe the qualifications of an elder is that maybe you're not, then we've got some clues to what we can do to focus on our personal growth. First Timothy three, two through five, so a church leader must be a man whose life is above reproach. He must be faithful to his wife. He must exercise self-control, live wisely, and have a good reputation. He must enjoy having guests in his home, and he must be able to teach. He must not be a heavy drinker or be violent. He must be gentle, not quarrelsome, and not love money. He must manage his own family well, having children who respect and obey him. If a man cannot manage his own household, how can he take care of God's church? This is a mighty uh, standard here. I don't know about you, but I got plenty of stuff to work on this, and I, I do full-time ministry. And I know we all have a, a chance to grow, but let's look at that standard and try to apply it to ourselves. Let's move on to time for love. We're going to focus on this slide here, and for our audio listeners, we're going to go ahead and read it anyway. After we get through this, we're going to pause the teaching so you can spend time as a group going over these. And you can ask yourself these questions at the bottom. But let's hear the, the scripture first. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and it keeps no records of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up. Love never loses faith. It's always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. Now, as you talk amongst one another, do you believe these statements? Ask the group, what are you doing well? What, what are you not doing well? What's the biggest opportunity for your growth in love? And one of my favorite questions is, what can you commit to doing right now to grow in love? Because if we're just talking about love and not making a commitment, it's just talk. So, so go on and discuss with people. Take a break, and we'll move on in just a moment. Well, I hope you enjoyed that discussion. Let's move on to another scripture. Proverbs 16, 32. Better a patient man than a warrior, a man who controls his temper, than one who takes a city. Now, some of you might have military service, either you were or are currently. There's a place for that in the Bible. And I think what's also about the Scripture, when you're standing at heaven, if you're seeing what God lifts up, could you imagine how awesome it would be to help your nation and, and secure an area that was hard fought and won? Now, there's some victory to that. There's some Christ-likeness to that, if you do it righteously. And, but Christ would lift up a patient man. 
a man who controls his temper, he lifts it a little higher. It's important to know what we need to do. Now we're going to focus on the tactics to break the power of anger. But I want to tell you a quick story once. I remember boxing as a young man. I'd never done it. And I remember guarding the side of my face and getting hit square in the middle and then protecting the front of my face and getting hit on the side. The, the, the gentleman I was boxing with, I didn't see him for 30 seconds and I felt everything he threw at me. I was seeing colors. It was a miserable boxing experience for me. I wish I could have seen the video and I'm really happy for him because he was sticking and moving and whatever boxers do. I didn't have any tactics. Do you seriously want to hit hard? If we're going to have anger in our heart, we've got to get some scriptures to hit at it. It ain't going away just because of one prayer. Jesus, make me happy and take my anger away. But let's go on. Let's get some heavy hitting scriptures. Proverbs 29, 11. Fools vent their anger, but the wise quietly hold it back. That's awesome. Ecclesiastes 7, 9. Control your temper. For anger labels you a fool. Proverbs 19.11. Good sense makes a man restrain his anger, and it is his glory to overlook an, a transgression or an offense. This is very important. When we have anger, we don't want to just give vent to it. We want to quietly hold it back. That's tactic number one. We got to control our temper. We don't want it bubbling out. We're going to control it. We're going to have self-control. We're not going to blame society. We're going to control our heart. And it's to our glory to overlook an offense. If you can overlook an offense, you're doing some of the work for Jesus. And by doing this, you're actually helping release blessing into your life. Let's look at a, a few more that a good tactics here. Proverbs 15.1. A gentle answer deflects anger, but a harsh words make tempers flare. Also, Colossians 3.8. But now you must rid yourselves of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. So if we're going to use gentle answers, we're going to deflect anger. When people come at us, we're going to start with gentle answers. We're going to calm people down. And also the scriptures talking about getting evil out of our heart. This is not cool, y'all. When we have malice, slander, anger, and filthy language, how many of us could cuss less or say, say more positive words? It's important, and it'll change your life. Uh, next, Ephesians 4.26, in your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on you while you're still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. One of my favorite parts of this scripture, it says, in your anger, do not sin. Did you know you can have anger? That doesn't necessarily make you sinful. It's what you do with it. Do you remember earlier when, when we're calling people idiots, when we're calling, uh, cur we're cursing people, we're in danger of hell when we hate people. Christ is looking at our heart, and the judgment due for that amount of hate is the same judgment as murder. I also like this scripture. It gives us a clue to not let the sun go down on our anger. So, understandably, Jesus knew we were going to be upset at days and times. And the spirit of wisdom in, 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 in Ephesians is when we go home before bed, let's try to get resolution to our day. Let's pray it through. Let's talk to somebody if we're still mad at something. This is important. We don't want to go to bed with anger and wake up with it. We might get it throughout the day, but let's repent of this sin and move on. We got another scripture here. James 5, 16, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous man has great power and produces wonderful results. It's time to pray with people. If you don't ever call somebody and tell them, you don't have accountability. You're not sharing, you're not being vulnerable with anybody, whether it's your local pastor whether it's some sort of team leader or, or close godly friend, we got to let people know what's going on. And if you're married, your spouse is great too. But sometimes we want to reach out to the brethren if you're a man. And, and, and if you're a lady, you got to reach out to the cistern. <laughs> There's a valuable promise here. If we do this, our healing's going to come. Surely we can confess our sins. And I guarantee when you do this a lot, it, it, 
you're not going to want to sin. This is why it helps. Another scripture, Matthew 5.23. So if you are presenting a sacrifice at the altar in the temple and you suddenly remember that someone has something against you, verse 24, leave your sacrifice at the altar and go and be reconciled to that person. Then come and offer your sacrifice to God. Now, we're not giving sacrifices like they did in the Old Testament, but how about in prayer time? Let's say you're praying for somebody, you're trying to do something right. It, maybe you're helping your children, your grandchildren, or maybe you're just doing a good job. And, and you're acknowledging God, and God's saying, if you suddenly remember that somebody has something against you, basically stop what you're doing and go be reconciled to that person. Now, this isn't a full teaching on reconciliation because it's hard when we've hurt people's feelings. And if we're talking about anger, there might be some strong feelings there. But if you start this as a pattern in your life, you just decide that I'm going to go tell people sorry and I'm going to fix my relationship with people. Number one, you're going to feel a lot better. You're going to feel a lot lighter emotionally and spiritually. And you're not going to walk around with a guilty conscience. And let me tell you something, if you sinned against somebody and you knew God was going to make you go say sorry, sometimes like that alone will help you not do that. Look, this is one of the most powerful things I know. If you want to help people for Jesus, sometimes we'd rather just tell them how they're right or they're wrong. But when you go apologize to somebody, this is good evangelism here. I, sometimes people want to give out a track. Why don't you go tell somebody sorry? Yeah, They'll be more uh, amped to listen to Jesus usually than just knocking on a random door. Our next scripture is Luke 6, 27 through 30. Now, these are red letters. Jesus is talking. But to you who are willing to listen, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who hurt you. If somebody slaps you on one cheek, offer the other cheek also. If someone demands your coat, Offer your shirt also. Give to anyone who asks. And when things are taken away from you, don't try to get them back. I got to admit, this, this scripture is not the easiest to follow. And I can tell you why it's not easy to follow. Because each one of us have a sin nature. The sin nature will never follow God. But we're going to try to be spiritual people. We're going to try to let God leaven and press and push the blessing into our lives. But we got to do the things he says to do. I hope you enjoyed those red letters because we can walk this out. We can take shots against anger. Now, I've got one last visual aid for you. It's called Defeating Anger, and I put spiritual paraphrases. You could look these scriptures up, but I just put the paraphrase so we get through it quicker. And all these scriptures are, are listed in full and detail on Podcast 10 if you want the full teaching to get all the technique and tactics you need to defeat anger. So we're going to live a good life. We're going to be gentle with self-control, wisdom, we're going to take care of people. We're going to be a good family person. We're not going to be violent and a heavy drinker and a lover of money. We're going to confess our sins to others for healing and prayer. We're going to quietly hold back our anger, control our temper, and restrain our anger and overlook offenses. Look, man, we're becoming like Jesus Christ. This is awesome. The scripture also says, be kind to animals. And when you're tempted, God will show you a way out. Find it and use it. Joking is dangerous. We're going to have gentle answers, not harsh words. We're going to get rid of anger, rage, and filthy language. We're going to be friends with nice people, and we ourselves are not going to be angry people. We're going to let God deal with revenge, not us. We're going to love our enemies and bless them, and we're going to choose to love. And I, I want to close with this, and, and notice 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7. Most of these things, love is almost never a feeling. It's a choice and an action. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable, and it gives no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up. Love never loses faith. It is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. So let's think about this and try to find a way to apply it. Now, we have some Establishing Royal Lives assignment. 
Also, remember, we're on Locals. Reach out to us. We'd appreciate to hear from you. And we, you can also see our shows on Rumble and YouTube. So here's our, our Establishing Royal Lives assignment for the week. This is tough. There's four of them. This is tough, but I, I know you can do it because you want God in your life. Number one, we're not going to befriend angry people or associate with hot-tempered people. It's time to evaluate your relationships and decide, if are you the angry person that needs to change? Can you do that this week? Can you commit to that? Our second part of the assignment, Jesus said, do good to those who hate you and bless those who curse you and pray for those who hurt you. We need to think about this before these stressful situations. If we don't think about it before it, we won't have a, a reflex to give into it. So think about what we're going to do. And then when something happens, bless people in the act. It'll protect us from violence and anger. Our third thing is Matthew 5, 23 through 24. Now, I've edited this just, just for, for emphasis. Jesus said, now these are red letters, if, if you suddenly remember that somebody has something against you, go and be reconciled to that person. Now, this is, this is really challenging because when we say sorry, it could affect relationships if somebody didn't even know. Uh, we got a reputation at work, but let me tell you, when you do something for Christ, it's a good thing. Can you try to reconcile with one person this week? Now, you might need to reconcile with your spouse and and there, there is some issues there in the home, and, and that's very important. But also, if you can, let's try to get outside of our house. Let's get outside of our comfort zone. If you do these things, you will grow tremendously. And for the extra credit, if you read one chapter in Proverbs a day, there's only 31 chapters. If you did that for 31 days, the spirit of wisdom has all kinds of things to say about anger, foolishness, wisdom, controlling your temper, being patient, using gentle words. You can do this. Thank you for your time. Have a great day. It's time to arise. Now is the time to stand firm in your holy royal blessing. So come on now, click another video because it's important to keep on growing.